Hi, I'm Phil Hill. Welcome to eLiterate TV's series on personalized learning. In this series, we look at that term, which is heavily marketed but poorly understood, to see how it's actually implemented at various colleges and universities. What does implementation really look like in practice? What problems are we trying to solve? How well is it working? Today, we'll look at two personalized learning programs at Arizona State University, a large and aggressively growing research university that is well known for its embrace of technology-enabled programs. ASU has a large and growing online program, a high-profile partnership with Starbucks to help employees get online degrees, and various partnerships with technology companies. It's useful to go beyond the headlines, however, and see first-hand experiences of programs, understand how they're working and how they support the university's mission. Um, first off, we are a large university, and we have a mission to, uh, you know, the charter of the university indicates that we're gonna be a great university by who we include, not by who we exclude. And so that is often referred to as the access mission. The access mission means that we take students who are, uh, by all reasonable measures, ready for college. Um, we have the same admission standards, for example, that Berkeley had in 1950, when mm -hmm. they were taking thousands of students under the GI Bill. We so say you go through high school, you take a rigorous high school curriculum that prepares you for college, you get B's, you can come to ASU and compete and try and, 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 try and succeed. And as a result, um, our student numbers have increased a lot. So we've gone from fewer than 50,000 students uh, 15 years ago to our current residential student population of somewhere around 70,000 students. We've done that at a time when we did not increase the faculty in the same amount or percentage as the number of students increased, and where the staff basically have stayed, has, have stayed stable. And so the reason, uh, and so part of the way that we've been able to be successful with that huge number of increase in the number of students is by experimenting and by creating a technology-enabled student experience that allows students to get the same discovery-driven, research-focused university education from a top-tier university that they would have had 30 years ago. So personalized learning offers a tremendous opportunity, not just for students who are perhaps struggling with the materials and need a little bit more time or need uh, a different way to go through the materials, but also for high-performing students. Uh, in some cases, we're learning that, that students who are progressing can, can actually complete materials much quicker than the average. So we very much view our mission as helping those students to find their way past the pastiche of holes that they might have, and then to be able to realize their potential. So take math as an example. Mm -hmm. Math is, a, I think, a very easy place for most people to understand, because I think almost everybody in the country has math deficits that they're unaware of. Because you get a B in third grade math. What that means is there were a couple of things you didn't understand. Nobody tells you what those things are. You don't have a very clear idea. But for the rest of your life, all the things that depend on those things that you missed, you will have a rocky understanding of. And so year over year, you accumulate these holes. And then finally, somebody in an admissions exam or on the SAT or the ACT faces you with a comprehensive uh, survey of your math knowledge. And you suddenly realize, wow, I'm underprepared. I might even have gotten pretty good grades. But there are places where I have holes. We very much view our mission as trying to figure out how it is that we can serve this student body. And even though our standards haven't changed, our students certainly have, because the demographics of the country have changed, the character of the country has changed, and the things we're preparing students for have changed. And so the centrality of things like math, much higher now than it was before. So many opportunities depend on mathematics understanding that didn't depend on those things before. So for these reasons, we're taking hard looks at our general education curriculum to try to understand how can we make changes to that curriculum to make it more engaging for today's students, to make it more effective for today's students, to differentiate the experience, to try to meet students where they are. And, and there are some burgeoning technologies that have, have finally cracked through 
the barriers of scale. They're no longer proof points anymore. Sure. So the, the Khan Academy program you're doing is, I understand, it's for general ed education math. So could you give just a quick summary of what the program is? Absolutely. So uh, for the last three and a half years, maybe four, we have been using a variety of different computer tutor technologies to change the pedagogy that we use in first year math. Now first year math begins with something we call Math 110. Math 110 is like uh, if you don't place into either college algebra, which has been the traditional first year math course, or into a course we call college math, which is your non-STEM major math. If you don't place into either of those, then that shows you need some remediation some bolstering of some skills that you didn't gain in high school. And so we have a course for that. And so our first year math program encompasses getting you to either the ability to, to follow a STEM major or the ability to follow majors that don't require as intensive a math education. And so what we've done is create an online mechanism to coach students. Each student is assigned a, a trained undergraduate coach under the direction of, of our instructor who then helps that student understand how to use the Khan Academy and other tools to work on the skills that they show deficit in mm -hmm. and work toward being able to satisfy the very same standards and tests that we've always used to ascertain whether a student is prepared for the rest of their college work. There are plenty of institutions experimenting with new technology-based pedagogical approaches but pilots often present a challenge to scale with quality. ASU's vision, however, centers on scale and access. One observation I've seen from what's happening in the U.S. is there's a lot of pilots, but that never scale mm -hmm. to go across a school. You sound confident that you will be scaling. Yeah, let me, scaling. We, we, we kind of don't pilot stuff here. Okay. Um, when we did the math program, we actually um, turned it on in August 20. 12, mm -hmm. uh, after all of nine months of preparation working with Newton, we turned it on and it applied to every, every seat in every freshman math course at the university. And there's a reason for that. Um, my experience, and it, not just mine, but the university's experience with pilots is that they have a very difficult time getting to scale. And part of the reason is because guess what, it doesn't work the first time. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work the first time, maybe not the second. It takes multiple iterations before you understand and are able to succeed. And so if you start with a pilot and you go a semester or two and hey, this isn't as good as what we were doing, you'll never get to scale. Mm -hmm. In our case, the experience with math is, great, is, a, is a very good uh, example of that, you know, because Working with a new technology is not a silver bullet. It's not like we're going to use this technology and now all of the grades are going to go up by 15%. What you have to do is work with the technology and develop the entire learning ecosystem around it. And that means training faculty. You know, we are moving faculty away from standing up in front of a room delivering content to looking at a dashboard and figuring out which students they need to work with on a one-on-one -on -one or a small group basis in order to succeed. That's a complete transformation for what the faculty have done for the past, you know, the prior 14 or 15 or 22 years in their curricular history. And so it's the sort of thing, and, and, and if faculty don't have multiple time periods or multiple teaching sessions to get used to that, it's easy to resist and if you resist it, it fails. Mm -hmm. This is an audacious and high-risk vision ASU has of affordably providing a Berkeley quality education to 70,000 plus students using technology-enabled programs. In the next two episodes, we'll talk to students, faculty, and teaching assistants to get a better view of one course that aims to reimagine general education and another course that aims to reimagine remedial math. We'll find out how students experience these new approaches and how faculty and even teaching assistants are experiencing a profound change in their roles.